Good evening, mga mahal, my fellow gods, beloved. Come, join me again tonight in reading God's word, His love letter to us. Hallelujah. We praise the Lord and we glorify you, O God. You are worthy of glory and honor and praise the Father. You are so, so good, Lord. You are so awesome. You are so wonderful. Oh, God, thank you. It was raining earlier on quite heavily and it's cool and as I lease around my bed and enjoying the God's presence hallelujah thank you father it's so good Lord you're so awesome you're so wonderful Lord Jesus I welcome your presence precious Holy Spirit great the greatest power in the world today is the precious Holy Spirit thank you Lord your love is boundless amen hallelujah welcome you lord hallelujah jesus come holy spirit follow me now i need your anointing come in your power i love you holy spirit you're captivating my soul and every day i grow to love you more amen thank you father yes precious holy spirit we welcome your presence as we continue to read your word hallelujah yes lord you are the first and the last the beginning and the end the alpha and the omega hallelujah he was the first oh yes he was the last hallelujah he was dead but he came to life, yes, Lord. He was the Alpha and the Omega who live and die alive forevermore. He knows our works, yes, Lord. You know everything. Let's be in faithful, hallelujah, yes, Lord. He knows our poverty we should endure. He knows our tribulation, we should not fear, for no servant is greater than his master, yes, Lord. No servant is greater than his master. He who has an ear, let him hear. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes his eternal life, and he who is faithful, receive the crown of life. Yes, Father, as we are faithful to you, Lord, yes, we will receive the crown of life, the crown of rejoicing, the incorruptible crown, the crown of glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you, Lord, and we glorify you, O oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, as we continue to read. Your word again with my beloved and I and with our loved ones, Lord. Father God, we need you. <laughs> Precious Holy Spirit, we need you, oh God. We welcome your presence. Thank you also, Lord. This look, look at this. This is that these are two like handkerchief or a table runner. My pre previous employer with my sister in law, they gave us this uh, purple and blue my sister's my sister-in-law's favorite color is blue and mine is purple it's so nice and hallelujah thank you lord for them bless them oh god today is the reading reading anniversary my doctor and mrs lim lord bless them thank you lord for the reading uh for their love and uh, thank you lord that we are, they are a blessing to our family my sisters and i are so blessed to be able to work with them and so as grandparents and i now Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for them. Oh, God. What does it say, sir? Say, sir, the November 18. Um, as we gaze every day into the windows of heaven, surely our hearts will flow, will follow. <laughs> Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 also it says here that god will not request more of me than i can handle 
He knows my limits. Amen. Indeed, God, you know everything. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Come, mga mahal. Let's continue on reading God's word now. Um, Second Samuel, chapter two. Oh, Second Samuel, chapter thirteen. The rape of Tamar. Oh, Hallelujah, Father. Thank you. Not a very good story, but we can learn from this. Now, David, son of Absalom, had a beautiful sister named Tamar, and Amnon, her half brother, fell desperately in love with her. Amnon became so obsessed with Tamar that he became ill. She was a virgin, and Amnon thought he could never have her. But Amnon had a very crafty friend, his cousin, Junadab. He was the son of David's brother, Shimea. One day, Junadab said to Amnon, What's the trouble? Why should the son of a king look so dejected morning after morning? So Amnon told her, told him, I am in love with Tamar, my brother, Absalom's sister. Well, Junadab said, I tell you what to do. Go back to bed and pretend you are ill. When your father comes to see you, ask him to let Tamar come and prepare food for you. Tell him you'll feel better if she prepares it as you watch and feeds you with her own hands. So Amnon lay down and pretended to be sick. And when the king came to see him, Amnon asked him, Please let my sister Tamar come and cook my favorite dish as I watch. Then I can eat it from her own hands. So David agreed and sent and sent Tamar to Amnon's house to prepare some food for him. When Tamar arrived at Amnon's house, she went to the place where he was lying down so he could watch her mix so he could watch her mix some dough when she baked his favorite dish for him then she baked his favorite dish for him but when she set the serving tray before him he refused to eat everyone get out of here Amnon told his servants so they are left then he said to Tamar now bring the food into my bedroom and feed it to me here. So Tamar took his favorite dish to him. But as she was feeding him, he grabbed her and demanded, Come to bed with me, my darling sister. No, my brother, she cried. Don't be foolish. Don't do this to me. Such wicked things aren't done in Israel. Where could I go in my shame? And you would be called one of the greatest foolish in Israel. Please, just speak to me. Please, just speak to the king about it, and he will let you marry me. But Amnon wouldn't listen to her. And since he was stronger than she was, she raped her. Then, suddenly, Amnon's love turned to hate, and he hated her even more than he had loved her. Get out of her, he snarled at her. No, no, Tamar cried. Sending me away now is worse than what you've already done to me. But Amnon wouldn't listen to her. He shouted for his servants and demanded, Throw this woman out and lock the door behind her. So the servants put her out and locked the door behind her. She was wearing a long, beautiful robe, as was the custom on those, on those days for the king's virgin daughters. But now Tamar tore her robe and put ashes on her head. And then, with her face in her hands, she went away crying. Poor thing. Kawawa naman. Her brother Absalom saw her and asked, Is it true that Amnon was 
has been with you. Well, my sister, keep quiet for now since he is your brother. Don't you worry about it. So Tamar lived as a dissolute woman in her brother Absalom's house. When King David heard what had happened, he was very angry. And though Absalom never asked to Amnon about this, he hated Amnon deeply because of what he had done to his sister. Absalom's revenge on Amnon. Two years later, when Absalom's sheep were being shared at Balam Hazor near Ephraim, Absalom invited all the king's son to come to a feast. He went to the king and said, My sheep shearers are now at work. Would the king and his servants please come to celebrate the occasion with me? The king replied, No, my son, if we all came, we would be too much of a burden on you. Absalom pressed him, but the king would not come, though he gave Absalom his blessing. Well then, Absalom said, if you can't come, how about sending my brother Amnon with us? Why Amnon? the king asked. But Absalom kept on pressing the king until he finally agreed to let all his sons attend, including Amnon. But Absalom prepared a feast with but Absalom prepared a feast fit for a king. Absalom told his men, Wait until Amnon get drunk, and then all at my signal kill him. Don't be afraid. I'm the one who has given the command. Take your courage and do it. So at Absalom's signal they murdered Amnon. Then the other sons of the king jumped on their mules and fled. As they were on the way back to Jerusalem, this report reached David. Absalom was, has killed all the king's sons. Not one is left alive. The king got up, tore his robe, and threw, him, threw himself on the ground. His advisers also tore their clothes in horror and sorrow. But, but just then, Jonadab, son of David's brother Shimea, arrived and said, No, don't believe that all the king's sons have been killed. It was only Amnon. Absalom has been plotting this ever since Amnon raped his sister Tamar. No, my lord, the king, your sons aren't all dead. It was only Amnon. Meanwhile... Absalom escaped. Then the watchman on the, on the Jerusalem wall saw a great crowd coming down the hill on the road from the west. He ran to tell the king, I saw a crowd of people coming from the Horaim road along the side of the hill. Look, Jonadab told the king, there they are now. The king's sons are coming just as I said. They soon arrived and weeping and sobbing. And the king and all his servants wept bitterly with them. And David mourned many days for his son Amnon. Absalom fled to his grandfather Talmai, son of um, Amihud, the king of Jishor. He stayed there in Jishor for three years. And King David, now reconciled to Amnon's, to Amnon's death, longed to be reunited with his son Absalom. Absalom arranges Absalom's return. Uh, Father God, thank you, Lord, for your word. And uh, we can learn something from this. But really, there is consequences when we disobey God. Just like what happened to King David when he disobeyed about doing Bathsheba. And, uh, and so, Lord, help us more to understand, reveal more to us, Father. And uh, Father God, thank you again for today's word. 